So as promised, this is part two of that ultimate browning overhaul video. I was originally gonna do it as one video, but seeing as it got a little long, it's gonna be, this is part two. This is actually me installing the kit. I don't actually have any experience doing it. Um, I read the instructions and I watched a video they have on that BH Spring Solutions site, and I'll link that below. So check that out. I, they're experts and they know a little bit more about it than me. But here is the process that I went through to do it with just basic tools and me not knowing shit. Um, so check it out and uh, hopefully it'll explain how to put the kit all together and all that stuff. For those of you that are interested in get the kit or if you're thinking about the kit and you want to see the amount of effort entailed, it really wasn't hard. Um, I found it was harder to put the original parts back in the gun because I forgot to get trigger weights. Uh, pull weights before I put the kit in. I had to put the kit in once and take it all back and put it in a second time. Um, so kind of a dry run through off camera of taking it, putting everything in and then putting everything back. Um, but check this out and uh, it should hopefully show you everything you need to do to put the kit in. So I picked up a cheapo Wheeler trigger scale uh, and we'll see what it reads beforehand. Now this isn't going to be exact but I'll try and try and make it worthwhile. That one read just under five and a half. Let's see what this one. Oh, I gotta reset it. That one read just under five and a half as well. So they're pretty consistent. That one was right about five and a half as well. So with the stock setup, I'm getting about a five and a half pound trigger pull. So when we install the SFS kit and the new springs and everything, we'll check it again afterwards and see where it's at. Uh, I'm hoping it's lower. Um, the only thing that you guys might notice is different is the grips. I did put, um, I think these are Herit Combat Grips on there. I got these at a gun show. The wood reproduction ones that I got when I first got the gun didn't really fit that well. There's a machined lip that needs to grip the frame in here and these don't actually have that lip they just have you know it's just flat there's no um, angle shape to really grab um, so they kind of just floated around they're, they're kind of shitty not real happy with those grips. These ones have the the proper like dovetail to grab the frame there but uh, I don't know if they'll fit with the ambidextrous controls. So the kit comes with new grips anyways, and the only big kind of beef I have with these is they're, they're actually kind of rough, um, which is not terrible in and of itself, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of that much, much texture, but you know that's a personal preference issue. They're not bad grips. They're definitely sturdy and they actually grip the gun and don't move around like the, the knockoff ones. So but without further ado, guys at BH Spring Solutions sent me quite a few things. They sent me a, ooh, a freebie uh, buffing cloth with some more information about the company. They sent me a spring kit. Now this spring kit has different weights of springs. They give you information and you got to read through all this and figure out what springs you want to use. I'm going to go through and get the actual Figure out what ones I want to use and circle them so I make sure when I do the installation I grab the right springs. But they give you heavy and light springs for the hammer, the firing pin, recoil spring, all that stuff. And to some extent too they give you the information because depending on your ammo, you're going to need to tune your specific gun so that the cases are going to that range. So this kit, like, it's not going to be... Um, one size fits all you're going to need to figure out your gun like how you're shooting what parts you have because there are so many versions of high power they give you all the parts you need and for me like it's nice because you have extra springs um for example uh this is the sfs kit now the first thing i did when i when i looked in this box is i was looking at how the hammer worked because we all like to Try and figure out how everything works and I like instantly had all the parts shoot everywhere and had to figure out how to put it back together luckily like there's there's this instruction sheet with hammer assembly and it tells you how to put it back together but be careful when it's when it's sitting out of the box like this because these parts aren't 
like bound together until they're in the gun. So you can just like kind of shoot them off into space if you play with it. So, you know, luckily, like I said, there are instructions, but here are all the pieces for the SFS kit, the hammer, slide release, sear spring, mag release, sear, um, safety, this spring that holds the um, safety, and then this like hook or whatever that, that also works with the gun. They sent me a gunsmith kit with some punches, a tool to take out the firing pin spring. It looks like a hardened punch. Um, probably that one is to get this goofy um, trigger pin out. I know I had to use a crazy, crazy strong punch to get that out in the first place. I'm betting that's probably what that's for. They also sent me some grips that are made to work with the ambidextrous safety thing. So this should be everything I need to A, fix the issue I'm having, B, upgrade it to like Mark III specs and have this SFS kit um, hammer, which is supposedly going to fix the trigger. So I'm really interested to install all this stuff and see how it goes. So the first thing I'm kind of worried about is the springs for the gun. Um, they have this awesome thing on the back here. And I've seen this, I think, other spring kits. I think maybe my Ruger one had this. Um, but it's got, they checked what springs they gave me and what it's good for. But they also checked what springs are in here. But if it's got these outlines. So if you don't know what spring you're handling, put the springs on these boxes. And then you'll know exactly what spring you're working with. So that's beneficial because... It's hard when you've got just a bag with little springs in it. I mean, they did label a lot of the springs in their individual bags, but it's nice to it's nice to have a guide so I can say, okay, now I know it specifically is going to be this spring. So they give you extra um, springs for the SFS kit, even though it came with all of its springs. This is the one for the hammer system. This is the one for the safety this is the one for the mainspring. So you do get extras in there in case you do manage to lose one. Um, here's extractor, magazine latch, and safety lever spring. So I'll need, won't need the magazine catch spring because there's one in the kit. Um, and we've got some other exciting springs in here. We've got sear lever spring. Um... And the springs for the trigger. Here's our firing pin springs. Um, so, like I said, you've got all these crazy springs. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a going through and figuring out which ones I want to use um, based on the instructions they sent me and what ones are gonna work best for my gun. And then we'll start installing them. Okay, so I'm going to start throwing some springs in here, and I'll try and just go through and get everything. Um, first things first, make sure the gun's unloaded. You need to take it apart. So you've got two options as far as you can go through and try and do the springs inside first, inside the frame, or inside the slide. I'll probably just do the slide first because that's actually most of the respringing action. We're going to be doing. Um, so I'll try and get that done first. I'm going to take all my old springs and toss them in the box so I don't get them confused with new springs. Okay, so that should be my lightest recoil spring. Um, and we've got a few springs in the um, in the slide here. Now to get those out we've got to get this lever out and <laughs> the lever adds a, a little bit of extra work. Uh, it blocks the pin that holds the extractor and it also holds the firing pin in place. So we need to get that out first. Okay so we have our um, lever. I'm just going to tap that out So there goes 
our lever. That's going to trip this here. There's a spring in here that we have a replacement for. So I got to get get that thing out. Let me bring this in as close as I can. Um, okay. So there is our sear lever and the sear lever spring. The next thing I want to get is this extractor. We'll take that out. Um, it's going to be this really tiny pin that's down in here. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to get out. I like to work from the bottom uh, on this. And I like to tap it through from the bottom both ways because then I don't mar up the visible surface of the pin, but you don't have to do it that way. That's just how I tend to do it because I'm weird like that, I guess. Okay, and then Okay, so here's the pin and the spring for that. Now they actually sent me this cool tool that uh, is made to take the firing pin out. It's got uh, a remove side and an install side. So if we push this thing in here, and usually I would say the tools are kind of worthless, but in this case there's a lot of tension on that stupid pin. Uh, my 1911s have nowhere near that much tension. Uh, so it is kind of nice to have a tool that you're not fumbling around with a punch. Uh, you could do it without the tool, but the tool makes it super simple. So I'm going to go with the light firing pin spring. The reason being I have this safety uh, on the lever that holds the firing pin. So we can go with the lighter spring because it's not going to go off prematurely. Um, it it could be an issue if you don't have that safety. So with some of the versions of the high power that don't have the safety, obviously you're going to want to use the heavier spring. You're just going to take your light spring, put it on the firing pin, and then the tool has an install side. You're going to put it on like that, and then you're going to shove it in place, and the tool will kind of just get everything back in place so that that's really easy with the right tool um, next I'm gonna do the extractor spring now while I've got the extractor out I'm just gonna make sure there's no funk um, stuck in there it looks good there's no chips or cracks or anything to it so the part should be good uh, if the spring doesn't resolve the issue we may go back down this road uh, and have to replace the extractor itself but at this point, I'm just going to try and do a spring job. So like I said, with these small parts, it can be helpful to compare them to the chart on the back. Or in this case, I have my old one sitting here. So I can compare it to that and know, yeah, it's the right part. Now, if this is in the right spot, it will have quite a bit of tension to it and it's going to probably be kind of a bear to get this exactly in. So there's a lot of spring tension there so the easiest way I find is to put a punch in and kind of align it and lever it and push this through with your finger and it actually is not is not that firm to push through like that and now I'm just going to take a punch and tap it back to flush. There we have it back in its slide. There's our extractor. We now have the firing pin done. We just need to put our lever back in. And the lever's kind of weird. You gotta make sure that it's clear uh, and not blocking anything. Um, there's a path there that you need to make sure isn't blocked. But I need the spring for that. 
So looking at my chart, I've got two springs in here. It could be there's a magazine disconnect spring uh, and a sear lever spring. Hold them up. The smaller of the two is the one I'm looking for. Like I said, uh, it's it's really nice. They have it labeled too in a little baggie, but I like to double check because I don't want to put all this stuff back together and have it not be the right part. So here is our sear lever spring. This is not going to go in as easy as I hoped, but installation is the reverse of removal, as they always say. So I've got my pin started. I just want to make sure that everything works. I, and that, that is a substantially lighter spring. Um, so it should it should improve the trigger quite a bit. Having that as one less spring. And this is the one you gotta be careful when you do seat this pin. You just want it slightly under flush on this side. If you go too far, it can stick out. I don't think it's supposed to stick out there. So, um, but now we have all the springs. And before this extractor, I, I could push it with my thumb and it would move a little bit. This new extractor spring is super tight. So that should fix the extraction issue we were having. I was afraid that it wouldn't make that big of a difference, but it made quite a, quite a difference. So before I forget, here's our barrel, and here is our lighter recoil spring. Now, when you put a high power together, this thing, it, it can go either way, but it only works one way. If you put it together right, this all lines up. If you put it together upside down, like it, it, it sticks to the side like that, and it doesn't line up. So you can always check if you put it together correctly, this this block will line up perfectly. So then you know you did that. Right. So first things first, I'm going to take the grips off. So this is that lip that I was talking about. On the aftermarket ones that I started with, there wasn't a dovetail there. And so there was no purchase in the frame, which is kind of shitty. Um, I think they were 20, 30 bucks, cheapo ones. And I, I wish I had been able to find the actual takeoff high power grips or whatever. But like I said, in this case, I'm not gonna be able to use the stock grips without cutting it. And these Herrits are actually nice grips. Like I said, a little pointy, but not nothing huge. So we've got a couple things we need to address here. We've got the spring on the trigger that controls the trigger. So they sent me two lighter springs for that that I can choose from. Uh, I'm going to take that out. Now this, I've already taken the magazine disconnect safety out because that rides on the magazine and causes all kinds of extra tension. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but it's part of the design because that's what the French wanted, I believe. So <clears throat> I took it out. If you have that, there is a spring to drop that, but that's pretty easy to do. You can push this pin out on most guns. 
This gun, unfortunately, you have to take the trigger out no matter what. So I've already been in here. I do know that this pin that holds the trigger in is the absolute worst pin I've ever had to deal with. Uh, that thing, I broke a few punches on that pin. So what I do, or what I did to get it out the first time is I took a brass punch and just kind of whacked it one way and then whacked it another and then went back and forth. Uh, eventually I took a punch, a really thick punch, and ground it down so it would fit in that hole. And now I had a thicker punch because I actually snapped one or two punches trying to get that thing out initially. So I've got, I've got this punch that was in the kit. It's actually a really nice one where it's a thick punch that, that goes down like that. So it, it should work. Um, once I got it out and got some oil in there, it, it kind of comes in and out much easier. So it's not a problem anymore. But initially, that thing was just a nightmare to try and deal with. So, But once you get that pin out, uh, I just need to get in and get all the pieces out and get that spring replaced. So I don't actually remember how the trigger comes out. There we go. So this kind of sits under that spring. And once you put the trigger in, that spring gets tension. There's just a little pin that holds that spring in place. So I'm going to get the lighter spring and swap that out real fast. So since this is not going to be a carry pistol, most likely, uh, I'm going to go with the lighter three-coil spring. There's a there's a heavier two-coil spring or a lighter one. Might be the right size punch. Need a really fine punch to get in there. There we go. So our spring is out. Now installation is the opposite. You need to make sure that this hook faces downwards so it will catch on the frame. Um, I'm trying to leave the pin the tiniest bit still in place is enough that it's making the spring not quite fit. And I don't want to be that guy that just shoves the spring into place because with my luck, I'll damage the spring and, and then it won't work. So, you know, especially, especially when you're doing stuff like this, don't force it. Take your time. Do it right. If something's not working, stop. Take a closer look. Because it's always easier to troubleshoot something while the gun's still apart than put it all back together and now you're having problems. So our spring is now installed in the front. Um, this rear bar will sit under the back like that. And that spring both resets the trigger and keeps this in tension. If you have a mag safety, this comes more into play. Um, Without a mag safety, it kind of just always sits there um, other than reset or whatever. So to get our trigger in, it's a two-step process. You have to feed the trigger in from the front. There's some butterfingers going on too. I can <laughs> barely accomplish simple tasks. So once you have the assembly with the trigger back in, now we need to get that bar that hooks on the sear back. And we now have everything back approximately where it should be. We have everything kind of in order. You can see the trigger's moving. You can put the trigger in and not have it quite right. The big thing is you have to make sure that that spring in the front is on the frame, hooked on the frame, and the trigger moves freely, and that uh, lever on the back moves. Once you have it there, I like to just use a brass punch so I don't mar the frame, and just tap it so it's flush. Should be good enough. 
And so now we have a much lighter trigger return spring. I'm going to put this back together and we're going to do a trigger pull one more time with the stock spring kit uh, installed. Not the stock spring kit, the aftermarket spring kit, but the stock trigger and hammer and everything and see how different the pull is as it is right now. So, well, you can see this. It was right around five and a half, six pounds before. Okay, now it went off just a hair above five pounds. We'll try it like three more times and get a good, uh, a good idea. Okay, just like five and a quarter. So it dropped it probably half a pound, three quarters of a pound. Yeah, this, that one was right around five. So it, I mean, there's just the springs brought it down quite a bit. And the big thing you gotta remember too is that was not the main spring. Um, because the SFS system has a special mainspring, I didn't change out the mainspring. So that was just the the springs that I changed that weren't the super important spring to get the lighter trigger. So knowing that now it's down about five to about five pounds, I'm gonna install the SFS kit, and that will pretty much be it. And now we'll have everything done. So to install the SFS kit, I need the frame and and I'm going to need to start taking stuff out. Now the first thing to take out is the pin that holds the ejector and the sear and all that stuff. I'm going to drop the hammer so I don't have a bunch of tension on it. Okay. Okay, so right now with, with the tension there. Okay, so there is our stock sear, the pin that holds it. The sear spring is now loose. The ejector is now loose. We need to push the safety out, and that's going to let pretty much the rest of the guts of this gun fall out of it. So now, if you've ever taken apart and put together a stock high power, um, it's I I think the SFS kit is actually a little bit easier to get together than the aftermarket or the the stock parts, but uh, there is a few differences. So we're gonna have to go through step by step, and you do reuse like your stock. Um, ejector pin and the stock ejector and you use some parts again but here's all of our SFS parts and this is a stock part we're not going to need that we're not going to need the stock hammer we're not going to need the stock sear spring we just need this pin and all these parts are our SFS parts so to get these installed um, we're going to start with putting hammer in place here and now we have our hammer in place and now we have our extractor and our sear actually goes this way. This I always get confused when I do the sear on a high power because it looks like it could go either way and if you're just doing it based on what it looks like you can you can easily screw that up so if you're not sure as usual don't force it take your time and they recommend starting from the right side and getting the um, getting the sear first and then there's this little lever that rides above the sear or next to the sear ok 
10. I've got my sear, I've got my lever. Have my action parts in place. Okay. So we already have quite a few pieces in place. Um, it's really not that difficult of an installation. Um, this is your your ambidextrous part of the safety. This is a plastic part that just gets pinned on um, pretty much when everything's all together. Uh, and there is a little pin that has to hold there. And then we have our sear. You kind of have to move all these pieces until everything drops into place. And now we know it's going to fit and it's there. There is a spring that we have to feed in to give the safety tension. And it's actually got little little points like where it's turned up. And this part can be very difficult. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of do it and it's hard to explain. But if you take a flat blade screwdriver, a really small one, and you get this spring set up so that it'll it'll sit on that ledge you're just going to kind of shove it up in place and it should pop on that ledge and then sit where you need it to go of course now that i said that it's going to take me 37 tries and i'll look like an idiot but it is possible So, got our spring in place. That just puts tension on this part here. Now, here is our sear spring, and that goes up in the sear. And you kind of like shove it in from the top, and then it snaps down into place. So now we have our gun pretty much reassembled. I'm going to check it by pulling it back here. And we push it and it pops into place. And if we push down, hammer comes back. So we've got at least, at least this much of it installed correctly. We still need to get this side piece on, which uh, is going to just be tapping it in place. The big problem is it's in a rough spot, so you probably need a punch to get in there. And you may have issues holding the frame and the punch and all the things at once. If you do have problems, you can always put it in a vise. That may be easiest for you. But once you get that down to flush, It should be okay. So the only other part we have to swap out is the ambidextrous uh, magazine release. And how that works is it's just got this little free floating lever that sticks out on the other side and it sits between your fingers like that if you're a righty. But if you're a lefty, now you have something to hit with your thumb. And to get that swapped out, it's just like a 1911 where you kind of push the mag release and turn the little screw and you'll kind of get to this magic point where everything pops loose and then installing the new one it's going to be the same deal you're going to push the mag release and kind of jiggle it and turn the screw I always go really light with the screwdriver because once you hit the right point it'll be automatic and you won't like it 
it'll just snap into place. But if you're in the wrong point, you can strip that screw head. So just be very gentle with it. So now we have the gun all put back together with the new SFS system. Before I put the grips on, I just want to do some pulls because that's how we did it before. Now, I don't expect these to necessarily be the lightest because it's all brand new parts and they haven't really worn in yet. It looks like it's about six pounds. So it's up a little bit from when we were had just the springs and everything swapped out. But like I said, these are all new springs and everything. Um, so I don't know that that's going to be something we can really uh, say, oh, it's, it's a six pound trigger. I'm going to shoot it a little bit and we'll test it again because like I said, everything is new. I can say that the trigger feels a lot nicer. Like it feels really crisp. Um, also... With the old setup, you would see the slide move a lot when you were pulling on the trigger. This this seems to uh, have addressed that issue. Like it, it feels like it, it goes off much easier than it did before. Like I, I could feel the slide was like moving from the lever pushing up inside the slide. So that is all gone. Like it feels a lot smoother and crisper now. Um, like I said, it it's reading a little bit higher but I think that that'll change once we put some ammo through it so the one last thing we have is we have these grips I have these were the aftermarkets I got as you can see the the stock ones or the reproduction stock ones they're not really reproduct they're not really stock they wouldn't really fit with the ambidextrous safety uh, these Harrods would fit with the ambidextrous safety because they were for the mark III series but they sent me these really nice target grips uh, that are smooth which I prefer over the really aggressive textured uh, checkering on the Harrods and we'll see how these look and how the gun looks overall with them installed okay. So there you have it, the fully installed um, SFS, grips, spring set. Everything has been upgraded and replaced on this gun. Hopefully it fixes my extraction issues. I can say that the SFS trigger feels feels really cool uh, as far as it, it feels like it, it just goes off. It is, like I said, measuring a little bit heavier, but I think that will wear in um, the grips feel awesome. I really like the texture and like the contour, everything for these grips. They fit my hand really well. I know a lot of guys with high powers complain about slide bite. So another thing I noticed with the SFS system, I don't really get slide bite because I have, um, I don't know if they're small hands, but maybe I have a smaller amount here. I think I wear like a size large in most work gloves and stuff, but I, I don't have as much of a fat pad there or whatever most guys have problems with. But one thing I can say is if you do have problems with hammer bite, this hammer's really, really compact. So that should help you. Uh, it's just one thing I noticed now that it's installed. Because the stock one with the spur, the spur stuck down quite a bit more. I never had problems either way. But I know a couple of my friends that have shot this were complaining about it. So I'm going to take this out to the range. We'll shoot it. Get some rounds through it and test the trigger, see how accurate I am with it, if it cured the extraction issues we were having. But, you know, altogether not a horrible process of upgrading. It took a little bit of time, uh, a little bit of messing around, but, you know, that's pretty much any time we take a gun apart. I'm not an expert like the, the guys who made the video and the Spring Kit BH Spring Solutions. Their video, like the guy's just flying through, he knows what he's doing. I just kind of like to blunder through um, because I haven't worked on a high power in a while. But, you know, I like working on guns, so I don't get that frustrated about it. The big thing that I get mad about is when I drop the pieces on the floor and have to go looking for them with a flashlight. Um, one thing to do, too, and I never do this because I apparently like looking on the floor like an idiot for the parts I drop. But when you're taking guns apart, if, if you're not sure about how it comes apart, put it in a gallon Ziploc bag, and that way if any springs or anything goes flying, you can always get them back. So that was part two of the Ultimate Browning High Power Overhaul. Should have hopefully showed everything. If you have questions about the process of putting it in, um, leave a comment, and hopefully I can explain what you missed. Um, 
Also, like I said, the BH Spring Solution guys, they know their shit more than I do. Um, so if you do get a kit from them, they were awesome to work with. So if you have questions, I, I, they're probably they're probably going to be more knowledgeable than I am about most of your questions, unless it's something really basic. But as far as like different types of high powers and stuff, just call them. They really know their shit, and they're they're awesome to work with. Um, but for Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned more about putting in one of these SFS kits. Um, if you didn't see part one, which was shooting it, uh, check out part one. I'll link it in the description. And uh, for Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.